In another video, I took a look at how to solve this problem. m plus 1 squared equals 5. m plus 1 squared, if we multiply that out, m plus 1 times m plus 1, we get what's called a perfect squared trinomial. m squared plus 2m plus 1, and then if we continue the equation, we, we get equals 5 on the other side. So this this is called a perfect square trinomial, and thinking about you know, that fact, you know, the fact that this is a perfect square, it allowed us to take the square root of, of that expression. There's a process called completing the square that lets us solve equations that look like this when we don't start with a perfect square trinomial. So let's take a look at that process. Suppose I start with an expression. So suppose I'm trying to solve the equation x squared minus 10x plus 7 equals 4. Well, this is not a perfect square trinomial. In fact, I, I don't even think this trinomial factors. But that's OK. What I'd like to do is create a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to subtract 7 to the other side. I get x squared minus 10x, and then nothing, you know, plus, I'm going to put a little empty space there that I'm going to fill in a moment. And uh, on the other side, subtracting 7, I get negative 3. So now what I want to think about, what number could I put here? Is there a number that I could put here that would turn this into a perfect square trinomial? Something like m squared plus 2m plus 1. Well, let's think. So there are two examples. There, there are two general forms for a perfect square trinomial. a plus b squared. The general form for that is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared and a minus b squared. And the general form for that is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Right, and you'll see that those formulas are true if you if you multiply out a plus b squared and a minus b squared, you get those expressions. Because I have a minus 10, the perfect square trinomial that's going to suit our, our situation here has a minus, you know, the minus 2b is most appropriate. And what I'd like to do, I'd like to be able to factor this so that it looks like x minus some number, you know, x minus b, some number b. So in this particular example, you know, the, the first term, I want it to be like x minus b instead of a minus b. If I change the a's to x's just to make it match what we have up above, I get x squared minus 2xb or, or minus 2bx plus b squared. So that means that the number in front of the x, the coefficient of the x term, it should look like 2 times b. So I want 10 to look like 2 times b. And that means that b has to equal 5. So the number that I want to add at the end, the b squared value that I want to add at the end, it should be 5 squared, or 25. And so to complete the square, it turns out, we can complete the square by adding 25 to both sides. So if I add 25 to both sides, I get x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals negative 3 plus 25 is 22. And then this is a perfect square trinomial that factors as x minus 5 squared. Now, this is an equation that we can solve very much like the one that we did uh, in that other video, where I can take the square root of both sides. If I take the square root of this expression and take the square root of 22, I need to take both the positive and negative possible solutions. So I get plus or minus the square root of 22, and then I can add 5 to both sides to finish my uh, to, to finish solving the equation. 
so I get x equals positive 5 plus or minus the square root of 22. And so those are two different solutions, adding the square root of 22 and subtracting the square root of 22 give us two different you know, possible solutions. So to summarize the process, if we have an equation that looks something like x squared plus bx plus c equals d, we can solve it by completing the square, which means I want to move, if there's a constant term like c, if there's a c there, I want to move that to the other side, you know, subtract it or add it to get it to the other side, so that x squared and x, those two terms are alone. And then we want to divide the co coefficient of x by 2, uh, square that, and add that value to both sides. That allows us to factor the trinomial. That'll give us a perfect square trinomial that we can factor. And then we want to apply the square root property um, and solve for x. So take a few minutes, try to solve the following problem. Let's say we have x squared plus 8x minus 5 equals 0. I encourage you to pause the video. I'll complete the solution here in just a moment. Pause the video and try to solve this by completing the square. I hope you took some time to try to find the solution to the equation. Let's uh, try to work through the process. So I'd like to create a perfect square trinomial and the 5 isn't what I need. So if I add 5 to both sides, it kind of gives me room to work. right? So that's the first step. I want to clear uh, the constant term, get the constant term to the other side so that I can sort of see what better what I'm dealing with. Uh, and so I'm going to leave a little space there and, and put a 5. Right? So, so what I'd like to do is now fill in with an appropriate constant term. And the one that I need comes from looking at the coefficient of x. I want to divide that in half. So I'm going to take 8 divided by 2, I get 4. And then to complete the square, what I need here is going to be 4 squared. So I'm going to get 16. And that gives me a perfect square trinomial. But in order to get 16 on one side, I need to add 16 on the other side. So the other side becomes 5 plus 16. And now this factors, right? So, so choosing 16, taking you know, half of 8, taking 8 divided by 2 and squaring that, uh, that's what gives me a perfect square trinomial over here. And it factors, if you think about two numbers that multiply to equal 16 and add to equal 8, those two numbers are 4 and 4. So I get x plus 4 squared um, as a factorization of that perfect square trinomial. And of course, 21 on the other side. So now if I take the square root of both sides, I get x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 21, applying the square root property. And I can finish the solution by subtracting 4 from both sides. So we get x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 21. And so let me remind you, you know, this represents two separate solutions. So one solution would be x equals negative 4 plus the square root of 21. The other solution is x equals negative 4 minus the square root of 21. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.